A section of this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Coming up in today's adventure here in Borneo, I get scared shitless and confronted by some cannibals. Selamat pagi dan selamat datang di kampung kami. We also check out Kundasang, but it's a bit of a washout because of the giant storm in the area. And uh, we'll just feed some cute puppies, explore some nice areas, and just show you some of the highlands here in northern Borneo. So enjoy the episode. It's been a bit of a washout. It's been raining all morning, all lunch, and now it's the early afternoon. And there is a lot of things to see and do in this area, especially on a rainy day. You can go visit dairy farms, and there's, there's things that you can do as long as you have a car to stay dry. You can get from place to place. And this is the first window of a little bit of sun breaking through that we've had. So I've just been hanging out at the, uh, the lodge been catching up on some editing which is quite a rare occurrence and hanging out with the puppies that live downstairs under the house very <laughs> a good way to kill a few hours that is I tell you So I think I'm just going to wait it out because there's more rain forecasts. I'm looking on my weather app and there's storms in that direction coming this way. So I don't really want to set off on an adventure for the rest of the afternoon in case I get caught up in it. And the stuff that I have from yesterday is almost dry. What I really want to share with you is the epic views of these mountains which are all being hidden by the clouds unfortunately. But you know that's part of life, that's part of hiking, that's part of travel. And coming to Borneo, the rainy season is on its way, and maybe it's a little bit early. That's okay. We'll just hope for better weather tomorrow, even though it's forecast to be rain again in the afternoon. Maybe we'll have to have an early start tomorrow. But we will be coming back to this region at the end of the series to climb Mount Kiliman Kilimanjaro, Kinabalu, because it's, you know, you have to book in advance. And I went through a company here, and there's a very special activity that you can do at the summit, which is a surprise, and you'll have to come back to see not only if I can reach the top 4,000 meters, 4,000 meters, you know, that's just a little bit shorter than the Matterhorn, which is an incredible peak in the Swiss Alps that we saw recently, and this is actually up there at the same altitude, so it's no mean feat. This massive mountain that's sadly just hiding hiding away so I don't know more updates coming soon <laughs> Sadly, the rain didn't let up for the rest of the afternoon, so I decided to wait it out until the following morning and I hoped for better weather. Unfortunately, that never really came and I had to wait until the following afternoon before I could go out and explore the nearby area of Kundasang. Weather's cleared up a little bit. Have a look at this. Absolutely fabulous, darling! Now this area is very popular among tourists and it's known best for its epic views of Mount Kinabalu. And apparently there are a few fun places to check out. But with the heavy rain clouds covering most of the views, the real appeal of this area was seemingly lost. I did venture up to the famous dairy farm, but when I arrived, I just thought to myself, did I really fly all the way to Borneo to look at some cows and buy a bottle of milk? <laughs> I mean, after all, I can do that at home, and this wasn't the reason why I came all the way to Borneo, so I just skipped on the dairy farm. I kept exploring on the bike, looking for something fun to do, and I saw a sign for a hiking spot, so I followed the signs up and parked at the base of this hiking trail. 
but it just turned out to be a little viewpoint, a bit of a tourist trap. You pay a small fee, you walk for about five minutes up a path, and then there's this colorful lookout point. Again, this would be really nice on a clear day, I would imagine. But uh, yeah, it, I lasted five minutes up here, walked back down, and that was that. Sadly, I was a little bit let down by Kundasang. I didn't really see much appeal other than what would have been epic views. The town itself was a bit run down. I wasn't really blown away. I don't really recommend more than a night in this area if you're passing through. There was, however, one place that I really loved. I saw a war memorial on the side of the road. I saw British and Australian flags flapping in the wind and I didn't know what the memorial was for or the significance. So I parked up next door, I walked in, paid a small fee and I was really pleasantly surprised and I got to learn about a part of history that I had no idea about and yeah, I really loved this little war memorial. Unbeknownst to me until today, I didn't realise that there was British and Australian prisoners of war here in Borneo during the Second World War. If you remember, when we were in Kanchanaburi and we went to the Death Railway, well, those soldiers who surrendered in Singapore when the Japanese invaded Malaysia and Singapore, they sent them off to work in the famous Death Railway of Kanchanaburi. But a big proportion of those people, unbeknownst to me, were sent here to Borneo and put to work and forced to march. They, they call them the Death Marches, where they were forced to walk and march for 250 kilometers over and over and over until all but six survived. So approaching 2,000 people died here, British and Australian prisoners of war. And they've got this lovely memorial to remember and to commemorate. And they've done it in a really interesting way here because the first level is the Australian garden. And they've got this nice memorial to the Australians who passed away, the majority. And then a little bit higher up, just a few steps, they've got the English garden with uh, roses, bushes and things like that. And again, a memorial to the British who died. And then at the top here, they've got this lovely Borneo garden with local fauna. And then you come through this gate and they've got the, um, the names of the dead, um, lest we forget, and all the other uh, information about how they died, where they died and how old they were and stuff. And there's, well, there's thousands of them written on the wall. I've come back to check on Mr. P.J. Doyle. And uh, it turns out he's from New South Wales, Australia. And he was 25. And I thought, well, let's go check it out. And it was 15 ringgit to come in. And I must say, it was really lovely. So, yeah, I learned something today. And this memorial is one of the best ones I've been to. So yes, the war memorial, very interesting. And I was really glad to basically find something fun to do because Kundasang was turning out to be a little bit of a washout. Now, later that afternoon, I carried on exploring, made my way around and down through some more mountains to an area called Mari Mari. Now, here is a very interesting place. It's a must visit destination in my opinion, in reflection after my trip, because this was a really immersive experience that offers you the opportunity to connect with the indigenous cultures of Sabah, from traditional dances to authentic cuisine. It's just a real interesting window into the rich heritage of this region. And as you'll see, a very fun place to come and visit indeed. Okay, the tour has begun. We had a little briefing and for some reason, I'm the group leader, and later on, I'm gonna be responsible for some sort of quiz. And if I get the questions wrong, the people in my group get their heads chopped off. <laughs> this is BB, our tour guide. <laughs> Hi guys, everyone. How long have you worked here? Um, I've been here for six months now. Oh, so you're new? Yeah, I'm a bit new. Okay, and you said that there might be snakes. Yep, uh, actually a green uh, regular pit viper. Okay. It's venomous one. And because I'm the leader now, mm -hmm. thanks to you, <laughs> I'm responsible for our group's safety, right? Uh, Some actually, of them might get their heads chopped off. <laughs> so actually, we both. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll, we'll share the responsibility. Yes. Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, yeah. guys. 
one of the ways that I'm able to elevate this channel and this business is through a professional looking website. I use squarespace.com and they have these amazing professional portfolio designs that you can literally scroll, search for the one that suits your business the best and then just easily amend the text, add your own photos and videos and start selling products, start selling services through your website and it's never been easier to design on Squarespace. The whole interface is designed for people who don't know anything about coding and don't know anything about web design. It's completely free to create a website on Squarespace so go there, play around with the interface and create an incredible looking website but when you're ready to go live go to squarespace.com forward slash Paddy Doyle and you'll get 10% off your first domain. Okay so welcome to somebody's house inside the longhouse. We just found out that the longest longhouse ever recorded is in Borneo in the other province in Malaysia called Sarawak and it's 2.1 kilometers long and is home to 100 families because as the family expands as people are getting married and having children they extend it and it gets longer and longer and longer. Yeah, our tour guide Bibi was great. And yeah, okay, this is a touristy representation of the five different tribes that live in this province of Borneo. But you know, in reality, there are still pockets of these tribes and they might not be as prominent as they once were, but it's great to know and it's great to learn and be here and to experience the history and the culture of the way of life of the people here of the jungles of Borneo. How cool is this? We get to try a blow dart. Oh! We visited five different villages, each famous for a different skill set. Some were good at fishing, some were good at farming, war, and uh, yeah, just it was a great few hours and I filmed so much content. I could probably make three different videos about it. Just trust me, they'll feed you, they'll educate you, and you'll have a really, really fun day. Oh my God, it smells amazing. It smells like a corned beef and potato pasty from Greg's. Getting to know the way of life, the culture and the history of the traditional way of life deep in the jungles of Borneo. Selamat pagi dan selamat datang di kampung kami. Siapa nama kau? Good morning, welcome to our village. What is your name? Uh, my name is Paddy. Dari mana kau? Uh, uh, where are you from? Uh, from England. England, sangat jauh itu. Apa tujuan kau masuk dalam kampung kami ini? What is your purpose coming in here? To learn about your life. Okay, bagus kalau begitu. Ada berapa orang yang kau bawa masuk dalam ke kampung kami ini? So, how many is your group member that you bring here today? Uh, Fifteen. Siapa orang semua itu? Kau punya kawan ataupun nali keluarga kau? So, who are they? Is it your family or your friend? Uh, I never met them before. First time. First time. Oh, go on. oh, okay, bagus. Nama saya Bujang Berani, anak ketua kampung di sini. Kami semua harap kamu dapatlah belajar budaya kami dan bergembiralah sama kawan-kawan kau di sini. So, uh, his name is Bujang Berani. So, he hope that you will get new experience through all this visiting and uh, have some fun. Dan kami harap juga kau sebagai ketua kau boleh jaga orang dengan baik-baik di sini. So he hope that you as a group leader that you can take care of your own people while boleh? you guys are here. Okay. Kalau boleh kami terima kamu dengan senang hati. Kansayan matong. Mari mari. So kansayan matong means welcome all of you in Murid language. Okay. Hello. Hello. I really enjoyed that cultural village, and I learned a lot. And BB my guide or our guide he was great really funny really knowledgeable and he had a cool little walk on him <laughs> and it was just really cool to see you know the jungle way of life and the foods they make the clothing they produce weapons and overall it was a great experience it costs 100 ringgit per person and I'll leave some information in the description so you can book it ahead of time. Don't just turn up. Um, contact them on WhatsApp or something like that and find out if they have tickets available. Book ahead and reserve your space. So after that fun day at Mari Mari, I headed back to Kundasang to throw the dice one more time. And on the way, the rain came back. I don't know what it is about Kundasang. 
but every waking minute I was there it seemed to be raining. So I headed up to a viewpoint about halfway between Mari Mari and uh, the, the town and my hotel. Just wanted to try my best to share with you the epic views of Mount Kinabalu before we actually climb that mountain later in this series. I decided to get out of the lodge. It's been a little bit of a break in the rain and I've just come for a drive. Mount Kinabalu is looking spectacular. Even in this miserable weather, she's got a nice cloudy wispy cap on you can see her behind me there she's majestic the way she just rises up out of the ground it's just incredible so we'll just keep going along this road there's a viewpoint on google maps and we'll see if it's um worth visiting or not to the viewpoint it was about 15 kilometers it was quite a nice drive i think without the clouds it would be absolutely incredible out of this world sorry i got distracted if i saw orangutans but maybe it was just a squirrel <laughs> anyway there's a little cafe you can get a drink and i'm gonna stay here for a good half an hour and um I can actually see blue sky. This is the first time I've seen blue sky in a couple of days. So I'm hoping if I just hang around, wait a little bit, this will clear and maybe we'll get a really nice view and our first big reveal of the mountain. Was so yeah, there's, there's surfing there. Easy? Now. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I got there, it was pretty quiet and met some Swedish backpackers. But yeah. the weather wasn't oh, shit. Yeah, okay, we have the loveliest sunset oh, you had I've ever seen. So, because yeah. it was reflected in the ocean as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, weather is the be all and end all when you travel. For everything. It doesn't matter where you are the mountains, the beach. Yeah, for sure. Sunny day can make it. Makes everything better. Makes everything better, yeah. Although, clouds do add drama. Okay, so I made some friends, some backpackers. Um, they rented a car and they've just finished or almost finished doing the whole loop in uh, just over 10 days and on their way back to KK now and uh, I'm a little bit worried guys because I've been here for 20 minutes and there's a big old cloud coming in and I would hate to get caught in any more rain so what I'm gonna do <laughs> is limp home enjoy the ride get home before the rain kicks in distance thunderstorm brewing and hopefully get back to the lodge and hopefully have an incredible sunset from that perspective Whoa, and be in the nice. safety of the lodge. I am going to get a little um, chicken bun for the dog at the lodge. This is really ugly, scary dog with one eye, bless him. And I can tell he's the father of the puppies and he's miserable. Okay, we made it back. And it looks like the sky's clear. We might have a lovely sunset. And look who's here. I got something for you. Got a little chicken salad bao, like a little steam bun type of thing. What's this thing? What's this thing? I don't know who you are. Oh, you're mummy, aren't you? Well, daddy, oh, I got this for daddy first. Okay, you know what? You can have that. I distract mummy, but now you can have a nice bit of chicken. <laughs> All right, mummy, there you go. Daddy can have a big bit. There you go, mate. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> All right, mummy, there you go. All right, you get that while she's gone. <laughs> oh god there we go there we go this is why we came here to look upon the highest mountain in malaysia as well as borneo and marvel at the wonder 4000 meter 
giant piece of rock rising from the ground. Now, if I zoom in, you can see there's a white building with what looks like some sort of electrical pylon. That is the base camp. So when we do climb that in a later video, hopefully if the weather's okay, that's where we walk up to. We sleep there and then we go up to the summit. And there's a big surprise at the summit. I hope I get to show you it because it does get canceled on bad weather days. But just look at the mountain now. Wow. Mm -hmm.